Why Ben is a mysterious company to say the least. Up until now, they've only had one e reader, the Y Ben, and it was this really silly, small, DOS based operating system device that did nothing. Well, surprise, surprise, they followed it up with something that does not nothing. This is the Y Ben P60L, and it is a functioning member of the e reader society. No longer is it absolutely stripped of every possible feature and does away with most of the clicky buttons. This is a 6 inch e reader. We don't need to mention specs because it really doesn't have anything of note. It is still simplistic. So let's dive in because even though the e reader itself looks like everybody else, it is still a mystery. So looking at the screen right off the bat, it looks like a P6. The ones that Boyu made, the one that Lemon Reed made, the ones that MeBook makes. It's a little bit different, however. When you go to the settings, that no longer looks like a P6. This simplistic kind of menu does, but that's really where it ends. All the game and, and everything else just looks completely strange. If you tap the top, nothing happens because it doesn't have a drop down. It actually just takes you to a list of your books depending on where you tap. If you tap on the light, it's going to turn off and on the glow light, which we'll show you in a second. When you click refresh, it refreshes the screen. No, it is not a speed mode. When you go to settings, you have refresh mode, which you think might be an A2 mode, but it is not. It actually is how many times it refreshes. Now we get into this y esque simplicity, when you get this kind of placeholder MS-DOS-esque looking operating system. You get refresh mode every however many pages, etc. You can click that to get out. And not only does it circle the circle selection, it fully underlines where you are on it. If you go to power settings, you get a few things here, standby and auto shutdown, which can also be controlled with the power button down below. We're not going to go through every single one of these. We'll go to device information finally, and I'll have a little pop up and tell you you have 3.54 gigabytes available, but you do get an SD card, which is honestly a really nice addition. Fewer and fewer manufacturers actually give you expandable storage. That is a huge thing. You also get brightness, which controls the glow light. Surprise enough, it has a warm light. We'll save that to the end. So that was actually very nice. And if you notice, we're touching the screen. And that's huge for Y-Ben. That's a massive accomplishment, all things considered. Their other e-readers, the prototype and the Y-Ben base model, both do not have a touch screen. So this is a massive advancement. When you go to library, it's going to scan your device for all the books. If you click on something, EPUB for example, we can dive into a book. To be completely honest, this is a good screen. For the most part, every single screen ever from an e-reader is from the exact same place, e-ink. So naturally, they're all going to look the same. But what actually sets this apart is that it's a sunken screen. Not only that, it's a really sunken screen. It's quite deep down there. I'm talking a full millimeter and a half. And there's no layers on top. There's no note taking layer. There's no glass layer. There's no sealant or anti glare film. It actually is pretty exposed. Now it's never the exposed screen. If you look at our teardown video, there are a couple layers baked onto here, including the glow light layer, which acts as a protective layer. But for the most part, the contrast is actually pretty solid. And you can change pages multiple ways by swiping, tapping, or there's those clicky buttons again turning the pages with the page turn buttons. And you know what? It's nice to be known for something. If Y-Ben needs to be known for its simplicity and its clicky buttons, so be it. We need players in the game of all sorts, of all makes and models. This is actually a decent experience. That's really where it ends. If you tap in the center and try to change anything, it just gets this text heavy, weirdly formatted list of everything. Rotate screen, black and white text, which inverts the colors. And if you go to inverted view, you can see it inverts everything and goes away. You don't get a choice to change anything live in the background. So if you're hoping you can see how it looks without going through five steps of restoration, you're out of luck because everything you do actually takes you out of it. You can change the font size as well like so. You can go SM all the way up to triple XL. If I go to XL for example, again, can't really see what it looks like, 
until I've committed to it. But you know what? Look how white that screen is. Look how absolutely non-gray that screen is. This is honestly, display-wise, up into the upper echelons of e-readers because that is almost as white as we've seen it. Now, does it take a very simple e-reader to achieve that kind of whiteness? Kind of, because the less physical build layers you have between the e-paper EPD, which is the electronic paper display, and your eyes, the better. It, it typically looks better. You can change the margins as well, which isn't very good because it actually chops some of the words, and everything you click on does take quite a bit of time. You can see I clicked on the margins and nothing even popped up till I clicked on it the second time. Overall though, it does have a decent overall look. The functionality is next to nothing on the back end when you dive into the settings because it really just is a list of a whole bunch of things that just takes forever to accomplish. I've never understood e-readers infatuations with adding games like Pocketbook and now Wyben. What is the point of adding one out of your nine cells to be a game and then once you're in there, you only get two games and you can't add additional games. And the games themselves are terrible. You have this control pad, you have levels in the middle, and then up and off to the left, you get the game itself. And the level list is bigger than the game. You can't even really see what you're doing. This is Sokoban, in which you have to move these squares into the circles. As you navigate around, it takes one to three presses for your guy to do anything. This is the adventures of a little squirrel that needs to clear his way to rightfully regain his place on the throne, so to speak. It's a pretty bad game, and you only have that one or Jigsaw, which isn't any better, and you can't add anything else. Not really any complaints about the file browser. You can look at everything on your device. In the root memory, you can go internal memory or view the external memory via SD card at the bottom. If you are thinking you can install APKs, unfortunately, no. Although it does read the APK, there is no package installer on board, so you can't install third-party applications. If you are saying, well, why don't I use Chrome? Surprise, surprise. Although they are making steps in the right direction, there is no Wi-Fi on this unit. So you can't even go on the internet and use the downloader package installer from the web browser to put APKs on this. That's just not possible. There's one final app that this has, Calendar. Now you would think you'd be able to take light notes, make some meeting notes and say, I have a party on the 20th to go to. Well, you'd be mistaken because no matter what you do, you can't actually get into that date and write anything. It doesn't do anything. This is literally just the display of a calendar. So even as fundamental as a calendar is, they don't even allow you to take notes on it to put placeholder things. Yes, it was a surprise to us too. The glow light is really good. This is a solid glow light. Not only do you have blue, which in this case is actually pretty white, you have a warm light as well. You can turn that on by pressing the plus and you can warm it up. And you can do a combination of either by turning off and on each color respectively. This is actually an amazing glow light for the price of what you get. A lot of basic devices only give you blue. For example, the Barnes & Noble, when they made the E version, they actually got rid of the warm lighting. Same with some Kindle Basic models. So for this to have both amber and white LEDs is nothing short of a miracle, all things considered with their current lineup. Look, we're not bashing Yben. We're just calling it like it is. Yben is a very strange company devoid of any modern features of any kind. They don't even have Wi-Fi. But all things considered, they're making huge strides in their own lineup. They've added physical page turn buttons alongside a touchscreen with a home button. Not only that, they've added glow light with warm lighting as well. Also having an SD card is a huge plus. All things considered, why Ben is moving in the right direction. You might ask, why Ben? Well, you need players like this in the industry. Everyone can't be number one. You need players of all walks of life. And why Ben definitely offers a pretty decent distraction-free, low-end unit at a decent price. 
For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.